So, uh, hello everyone and welcome back to Academically. I am Sunidhi Shahi, your host for today. And today we have a very special guest, uh, Mr. Roy. And I'm so delighted to have you as on our show, sir. So, thank you so much. And uh, just to inform you guys, he is also a pharmacist in Australia with a vast experience in diverse facets of the pharmaceutical industry, such as regulations, academia and clinical sectors as well. He has also cleared his CAPS exam. So, yeah, it's always going to be a plus point and we are going to have a lot of conversation today in the show so stay tuned and welcome uh, Mr. Roy. Thanks for having me. Yeah so uh, Mr. Roy just to start with the first question that you know why did you choose Australia as uh, uh, we know that you know you are from Zimbabwe and you have studied in China so why have you chosen Australia as a place to you know practice your pharmacy career? That's a very good question. Um, yes Australia has a lot of opportunities with the government to settling down especially later on in in life like you mentioned I've studied in, in Zimbabwe in China and um, my PhD I studied in Australia and I think it's a great place to settle down especially if you have a family I have a young family and the opportunities here are abound for your family so thinking about long-term um, relocation and settlement Australia is a place to be. Yeah, so like, uh, what is the difference in the, uh, like, as uh, I just mentioned that, you know, you are from Zimbabwe, you have studied in China, and you're now in Australia. So what is the major difference uh, that you see in the healthcare sector in all these countries? Wow, um, good question. Um, starting with, with Australia, Australia is very organized. It's very organized, you know, you, you are not confused as to what your career path is. You know where you are heading. Everything is clear cut and it's straightforward. You don't have to guess. So I would say that's one of the biggest advantages of Australia in that you have certainty in your career path, which is important as a professional. You've gone to school, you've studied the long hours, sleepless nights, and you need a rewarding career. So Australia yeah. off offers that. China wasn't bad, it's just that uh, there's a lot of competition there, um, a lot of people. So if you are up for the competition, that's okay. Uh, yeah. And ba back home is home is always home. But for me, my whole family has moved to Australia, including my, my mom, my sisters. So this is now my home as well. Okay, that's that's really great. Yeah. So like moving forward to my next question, uh, you know, as you have cleared CAPS exam. So would you like to tell our audience about the CAPS exam? You know, like what is it? You know, how difficult it is or like how long did it take you for the whole preparation? Yeah. You know, everyone has their own journey when it comes to the CAPS examination. So the CAPS exam examination is the knowledge assessment of pharmaceutical sciences. It's a requirement for a pharmacist who wants to practice in Australia to have passed this examination. So it's um, composed of two tests uh, that are conducted in two hours, one hour each, um, total of 240 questions. And they're asking you really everything you have learned in your pharmacy career. So not just the academic stuff, but some of the also clinical stuff you only get from experience. So they really want to ensure that they're getting the best pharmacist for the Australian setting. So they, t they take you through this rigorous test that uh, you really have to study hard for. In my case, I really had to study hard for it. It took me six months to study for it, but I cleared it uh, at one go and it can be done. You just need to focus and uh, it really yeah. can be done. Okay. So like... Uh what uh, also as you're also a faculty you know you're teaching a lot of students so like what inspired you to teach other aspirants for caps yeah um look i remember what i went through when i was going through the caps exam i really felt alone uh i took my course i did not enroll in any um you know acad academic institution like academic i wish i knew about it but that time i did it alone and i felt very lost and i'm not so sure how i got to pass because um as i'm teaching now i'm realizing this could have been much easier if i joined an uh, academic institution so i've I've been a lecturer before. I've lectured at universities. Currently, I'm also uh, lecturing at a university in Australia. So lecturing for me is second nature. It really comes natural. And mm -hmm. I enjoy taking part in the lectures at Academically, meeting new students um, mm -hmm. and seeing them improve and get to understand that this can be done. That's always just a joy for me. Yeah, that's that's really great. You know, there are a lot of people who get the joint teaching and you are one of them. So that's really yeah. great for our students as well, the aspiring ones. So yeah, moving forward to my next question. What suggestions or tips 
do you want to give to the others aspiring uh, candidates who do, you know who are preparing for the caps exam yeah you know at face value the caps exam seems like a very arduous difficult task i think what you need to just need to do is have a plan and joining an academic institution that is delivering this is the easiest way by far than going it alone it's it's because most of the time you're going to be working you probably have family and juggling all these things and reading on your own is honestly a very difficult task it can be done but why make it you know why go the hard way why reinvent the wheel so my advice is um join an academic institution you get to also meet other people that are on the same yeah. journey as you you can get mm-hmm. to share experiences and the good thing especially with academically you know there are platforms where you share ideas um the the online lessons there are online platforms you got a question even if you're at work you can just quickly go to your phone you know just jot in the question like hey i don't remember the structure of penicillin guys help me out here and you get somebody straight back at you with the response so that saves you time so yeah. just i think joining an academic institution that delivers and has a proven record of delivering is a sure way to go it saves your time right right yeah so like uh, what do you think is the biggest mistake that the aspirants often make like you know which interferes with their preparation is waiting until the last minute absolutely i think that's the worst thing that you can possibly do yeah. with the caps exam it's such a gradual slow process of assimilating the data it's a lot of data yeah. and people normally just want to cram for the exam you know just uh, ensure that they remember everything but there's just too much for you to remember and most of the candidates uh have not been in school in a long time so they're older and not don't remember as much as you did probably when you were 22 so you need to have a steady pace you know um make sure that you have a study you have a nice study plan after every day you're going back to your lecture notes and you're reading your lecture notes and you're on top of your game and don't if you have a doubt don't keep it with you you know pass it on to people who can help you and then clear your doubt it becomes much easier and of course practice makes perfect take the mock exams as soon as possible even before you think you know everything because people yeah. want to wait until like oh, I I don't know anything yet I can't take the mock exam but the best thing is try it so that you know where you are lacking and you can then work on that yeah and uh, like what is the most important topics you know uh, you think that you know one should address while preparing for the caps exam um uh, honestly I would say it's calculations. Uh I was a fan of calculations, I'm still not. I'm mainly a pharmacologist. I love pharmacology cuz it comes naturally easy for me. But find try to master the thing that you struggle with. And I struggle with calculations a lot. I didn't like them. Uh pharmaceutical calculations, moles, milli equimoles, all those that's very important for the caps exam because they are guaranteed to be there. So make sure you are on top of your game with your calculations. Try as many examples as you can to be as comfortable as possible. People like to run away from calculations because they can be tricky, but try and be comfortable with what makes you uncomfortable. Yeah, I think that's a very very great uh, information and insight that you have just shared. So I'm sure that this is going to help a lot of aspiring candidates, uh, Roy. So yeah, moving uh, to my next question, like do you actually uh, believe that you know getting expert help or coaching is necessary for caps aspirants and if yes then why? I I think so. Um I think I did allude to it a bit earlier. It's really about saving time. Um you can do it on your own no doubt but the time you spend doing on your own is actually double you know don't work alone if you can work with somebody so it's the journey becomes easier when working with somebody right because you're talking about it and before you know it you're there but if you know if you're on your own it seems longer so i absolutely think that it's the right thing to do join up with you know join an academic institution you got to meet a lot of people that are in the same boat as you are you know with family um multiple jobs low comes it's midnight hour shift you know the same thing is pharma so we go through all these things but it becomes easier knowing that you're not on your own yeah i think 100% and guys uh, that's where academically also comes up so you know we are there to help you we are there to you know help you get that dream job in australia so you can definitely connect with us you can subscribe to our channel you can get a lot of information through us so yeah we will be there you can also visit our website so yeah so i'll be moving forward to my next question that you know do you really think that you know relying on a lot of resources sources can be a bad choice because i have seen you know a lot of students or a lot of aspiring candidates rely on a lot of resources so do you think that it is a good thing or they should instead choose one resource that would be better for them it's a good question i think 
the short answer to that is you have to reach a compromise. Um, as a scientist, you can't use one resource. I think we all know that you need to validate your findings, ensuring that um, they are backed with fact and science. But using too many sources might also just, you know, muddy the, the broth. It becomes too many sources and it's difficult to then pull everything together. And you're going to waste a lot of time by, you know, trying to chase all the sources. So find the yeah. best sources, have two or three sources where you're going to rely on uh, come, you know, uh, you know, sunshine or rain, you have those sources, you know, they will give you the information you require and trust them. And when you're in doubt, uh, yes, you can then try and look for additional sources, but find lists, good sources that you can use um, that are reliable, that are peer-reviewed sources. If it's textbooks, of course, they are gold standards in pharmacology, pharmaceutics, mm -hmm. pharmaceutical chemists. We all know those. You won't go wrong with any of those. And of course, the lecture material that we give you at Academically yeah. has been tried and tested. You know, it's with um, it's in accordance with the clinical guidance in Australia and most of um, the previous exams as well. So that's your first point of view as well. Yeah. So uh, at last, I would also like to ask you, like, you know, what would you like to tell to the aspiring candidates for CAPS? Because I have seen, you know, even if we talk about the pressure, the mental health, a lot of students uh, take a lot of pressure that, you know, how am I going to do it? Maybe that person has done it in six months. How will I manage in six months? So what would you like to tell those aspiring candidates who are preparing for CAPS? Yeah. Um, so I think the best message that I can send right now is, um, find what works for you, find what works for you, find your own work-life balance uh, that works for you, especially with the CAPS. It has to fit in with everything else you do. Um, it's going to be part of your life for the next three, four, five, six months, and you're going to have to get used to it. Uh, it shouldn't be a by-the-way thing, and it shouldn't be the most important thing, but it should be routine in your life. Find what works for you. Only you, you know your, your lifestyle, your demands, um, where you need to be at a certain time. But you got to make sure you give it the time of day it requires and you'll be fine. Uh, give it the time of day. Do not neglect yeah. it, but it shouldn't be your world as well. Um, before you know it, you'll be in the exam and you actually pass the examination. So I'm coming to my uh, last question, uh, Mr. Roy, that, you know, as being a faculty of academically, how do you think academically helps the aspiring students to achieve their dream job? I think by providing practical examples, you know, people that have actually done it, that's the best thing, you know. Um, you want to be taught by somebody who's actually been through the same thing that you're going through and who's actually there where you're intending, where they can give you also first-hand information on what you expect. And, you know, um, half the test, half the, the, uh, the, the achievement is passing the test. The other is actually the relocation, how to get there. And so academically has people that are experienced with regards to not just the, the, the test, but also what it means life after that, because life continues. Um, second thing I think is, I think I alluded to earlier, um, the material that we have is second to none. It's tried and tested. It's based on previous mock exams. It's uh, people that are in practice right now, which also who also provide us with this information. So you can't go wrong with the content. And um, I think that's also pretty important. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Roy. I think uh, today's podcast is going to help a lot of aspiring candidates who are you know preparing for caps exams so thank you so much for your time and for all your valuable insights on caps exam and in general you know about australia and the healthcare sector so thank you so much and thank you everyone for watching us on our podcast show we will be coming up with more such podcasts on different different courses with uh, different different faculties with our guest with our founder so yeah stay tuned and if you have any queries anything related to our courses you can directly contact us on academically.com and our team will definitely connect with you thank you mr roy you're most welcome thank you for having me thank you so much have a good day bye bye thank Cheers, you bye